Hello students, in this video we'll discuss transformation laws for a covariant set of vectors. Let's be given a basis of vectors. Let's just do E1, E2, and E3. It doesn't matter actually. We can do this in any number of dimensions. E1, E2, and E3 is just sort of classical three-dimensional Euclidean space, right? Not, and the key here is that they're not necessarily, not necessarily, unit vectors or orthogonal. This procedure works even in coordinates that are not orthogonal coordinates and not unit vectors, okay? And then we know any vector v, yeah. any v in R3, and if you don't like 3, you replace 3 with n, right? Has the form, can be written, as v, and here's where we're going to introduce our upper and lower notations. I'm going to write this as v1 e1 plus v2 e2 plus v3 upper e3 upper, which concisely with Einstein notation, whenever there's a repeated upper index, and, or, and whenever there's an upper index and a lower index that are repeated, we can use the Einstein summation convention and write this as vi and then e I like so, right? And I've used Einstein's summation here. It's sort of a way of compactifying these things. We get more and more indices. So this is Einstein's summation. And remember that there are some indices when I do Einstein's summation, I can use any index I want, right? So for example, I can say this is going to be Vj Ej vector because it's going to be a dummy index over here. So that's the multiplication sign over here. So Ej sort of force of habit. So it's going to be Vj Ej like that because I have a dummy index, vj, ej, like so. It's the same thing. I can say it's also equal to v alpha, e alpha. Doesn't matter what index I use over here. As long as it's summed, I can use any index I want. It's a dummy index of an, okay? And now what I'm going to do is we consider a different basis, right? So consider another basis. I guess at this point I should mention to these coefficients v1 through v3 are called the contravariant components, right? So v1, v2, v3 are the contravariant, the upper index components. Okay, contravariant means upper index. Consider another basis, e1 tilde, E2 tilde, and here's where like the notation gets a little bit clumsy because I have to use like either something to denote the fact that this is a different basis, right? So I'm using tildes for a different basis here, right? And then what can we say? We can say that V is also equal to V1 tilde, E1 tilde, plus V2 tilde, E2 tilde, plus V tilde 3, E3 tilde vector, which we can write, of course, as just Vj tilde, E tilde J, like so I can look at the different bases over here, right? And so now, of course, since I have two bases, I know that there's a coordinate change which brings me from one basis to another, right? So there has to be an invertible matrix which does this. Okay, so we know, hence, we get two relationships, hence, we can transform the basis E1, E2, E3 into the basis E1 tilde, E2 tilde, E3 tilde. They're just two bases, right? So I can find a matrix which transforms one basis to the other. Now the important thing to realize is that these bases E1, E2, and E3, E1 tilde, E2 tilde, E3 tilde, might depend on coordinates, like orthogonal curve, linear coordinates, or general coordinates, right? So we're oftentimes compelled to think that these vectors are going to be constant, which do not depend on the coordinate frame, but oftentimes these vectors and these bases depend on the coordinate frame, right? So in the back of our minds, we want to think of these vectors, even though they look static, as functions of underlying variables of coordinates, right? So there's some implicit idea of coordinates underneath these vectors over here, right? So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say that e, EI, for example, EI is going to be equal to PIJ and then EJ tilde. And also, I can find that EI tilde, tilde I, is going to be equal to what? Is going to be equal to some numbers Q. Q what? Q, I, J, and then E, 
J like so. In other words, and those are matrices over there, right? Because I and J run from one to three, so this PIJ is a matrix, that QIJ is a matrix, right? And I want to find relationships between these matrices over here. So what are the relationships between these matrices? So let's figure that out. And so for those of us who have sort of seen, like the, if we think about the in Euclidean space and orthogonal curve linear coordinates, we know that in a reciprocal basis, I know that the determinant of one frame and the determinant of the other frame have to be reciprocal to each other or inverse to each other. So I have some idea that these matrices over here, these PIJ and these QIJ, should be invertible with respect to each other, okay? But let's prove that. So notice, that EIJ is equal to PIJ over here, and then E tilde J. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a dummy index over here, right? I'm gonna take this relationship for EI, and I'm gonna say that this is exactly equivalent to saying that E tilde J is gonna be equal to what? It's gonna be equal to QJ, and I'm gonna do a different dummy index, K, E, K, like that. I just replaced the dummy index of J, which I'm now using as a fixed index over here, as a dummy index over here, with a dummy index K, right? Okay, excellent. And so now what can I write? I can write this thing over here is going to be P, I, J, and then E, J tilde is going to be what? Is going to be a Q, J, K, and then E, K like that. Okay, I just replaced that identity over there. And now what do we see? We see that this is exactly equal to P, I, J, Q, J, K, like so, and then E, K. But this whole expression over here has to be equal to E, I. So this whole expression over here has to be E, I, which is gonna force what? This is gonna force this expression over here. So in other words, P, I, J, Q, J, K, has to be an expression, though remember I'm summing over J here, right? This has to be some function, F of I and K, that outputs what? That outputs one when i and k are equal to each other, and zero if i is not equal to k. And we have an expression for that, right? We have an expression that tells us that pij, pij, and then qjk has to be this Kronecker symbol, delta ik. And it, this delta ik is exactly equal to this expression over here. It's one if i is equal to k, and zero if i is not equal to k. And so of course, this, of course, is the Kronecker symbol. It's like Kronecker tensor, right? This is Kronecker symbol. So we've seen Kronecker symbol before in a variety of different contexts in our study of differential equations. We saw the, de the Dirac delta function, and that's related to this Kronecker symbol, right? So this point mass, it concentrates when two, when two of the indices are equal to each other, right? And so it's sort of akin to what the Dirac function is, but it's this discrete version of that, okay? Excellent, so that proves these matrices are, inverted, are inverse of each other, right? So this matrix PIJ, so hence, so we got proposition. These matrix over here, PIJ, is the inverse of what? Is the inverse of this QIJ. Excellent. Now let's figure out how the coefficients work, right? So the coefficients work as follows. So now, let's go to our coefficient relationship. Our coefficient relationship is that I know two things. I know that the ve a vector V is really what? Is really VI and then EI like this. And it's also equal to V tilde J, and then E what? E tilde J like so. So we know that a vector can be written either the I, in terms of the EIs or the EI tildes, right? And so now what will this tell me about how these co coordinates transform over here? Well, now what I want to do is I want to take this relationship over here, and I want to say that this is equal to what? This is equal to VI, and then what's EI going to be? EI is going to be what? EI is going to be PI, P I J like that, and then what? P I J, and then the E tilde J, E tilde J like that. Okay, so I've just used this transformation law, right? That transformation law over there. And of course, you want to think of the transformation law as just a matrix acting on a set of vectors. That matrix, though, is going to depend on the underlying set of coordinates, right? So in further videos, we're really going to expo exploit this idea that the underlying coordinate frame, in the best case scenario, the orthogonal curve linear coordinate frame, actually is embedded in this equation over here, right? So of course, as we start to begin our discussion on these, what are known as tensors, right? These tensor qu tensorial quantities are going to depend on the underlying coordinates, right? And they're going to depend on 
on the underlying coordinates and they're going to transform in a particular way, right? And so this is a very, very simple version of a transformation law. And we want to sort of always go back to our basis in linear algebra saying like, how does a transformation law work? How do I map one basis to another basis? Well, if I want to map one basis to another basis, there has to be an underlying matrix, an invertible matrix which moves one to the other, right? Now, of course, that matrix can depend on coordinates and we can extend our idea of invertibility to these ideas of local invertibility and when is the determinant of this coordinate change, when is the determinant of the coordinate change non-zero, which corresponds to invertibility of a coordinate change. Excellent. All right. And so now, and of course, I apologize for the speed at which I'm talking. Sometimes I get excited when I'm talking about something that's this, this beautiful, right? But of course, what's happening over here, there's a lot of indices to sort of digest, right? So it's important to take it slow when we're looking at these formulas over here and get information. I just have derived the transformation law now for these VJ tildes, because what do I have? Let's look at this expression carefully over here. So this expression over here, right here, tells me what? This expression tells me that the VJ tilde, so this implies that VJ tilde, VJ tilde, the coordinates in the tilde frame are really the VI coordinates and then PIJ. And of course, what this means is I'm being a little bit sloppy with the ordering here. This can be a PI and then a J and then a V, VI upper over here like that. So what we have over here is we have just a different way of writing these vectors in a coordinate frame. Let's write this a little bit more cleanly since I scribbled a little bit. So let's write this, of course, as just really P, I, J, and then V, I, upper. And this gives me the transformation law for the contravariant components. So this is a transformation law for the contravariant components. Transformation law. I don't know. Okay, I'm not Contraverting components, right? Now it's important to realize that what's happening over here. Let's, let's look at the difference between the actual vectors themselves and the components of the vectors, right? The vectors themselves and the components of the vectors transform in different ways. I have the untilded coordinates EI is equal to the matrix PIJ E tilde. J, right? Whereas the what? Whereas the V tilde J are correspond to the what? Corresponds to the PIJ. So in other words, the PIs are multiplying the E tildes over here, and now the PIs are multiplying the ordinary untildes over here, so they transform the coefficients of the vector, and the vectors themselves transform in different ways. So the contravariant components transform in one ways, and the co and then the covariant basis over here, so this is called a covariant basis, covariant basis, the covariant basis transforms in one way, and then the contravariant components transform in another way. So that gives us the first intuition that there's going to be different transformation laws for the vectors and the components of the vectors, and we're going to exploit this in further videos. Now, in the next video, what we'll see is we'll see that how I expand a, co a contravariant basis in terms of covariant coefficients, the same script will sort of interchange in that, and we'll discuss that in further videos. Thank you very much.